Hi everyone, my name is Hannah and welcome to Animal Hunt Video Workshop with the Hunt Museum. Just in case you don't know, a museum is a building uh, that you can go and visit and see lots of objects and artworks from history. The Hunt Museum is actually a museum in Limerick City, uh, so maybe you could ask your parents to bring you along sometime if you want. Um, and we have objects from all throughout history, from thousands and thousands of years ago, right up into the modern day. Here is a photograph of the front of the Hunt Museum. Uh, you can see that outside we have two big horse sculptures. I really love these horses because they contain lots of colour and beautiful images. We have lots of other sculptures and artworks in the museum that depict animals too. Today, we're going to be hunting for these animals in the Hunt Museum collection of objects. And so we're going to be looking online to find them and I'm going to be talking with you about them as well. But first, let's talk a little bit about art and animals. Have you ever drawn or painted an animal? What animal was it? Was it a dog or a cat or a fish or an elephant or a tiger? Now think about why you painted that animal. Did you paint or draw it because you like the animal and you think it's cute or cool? Maybe you have a pet and you wanted to paint or draw your pet because you love it. Maybe you drew the animal because you're, it's a scary animal and you're afraid of it. People love to make art about animals and we've been doing it since the beginning of human existence. Did you know that the very first artworks that we've found by people are paintings of animals that were painted all over the walls inside caves. These paintings were made up to 65,000 years ago. That's a really long time ago. And they can be found um, inside caves all over the world. What animals can you spot in this cave painting? To me, these animals look a little bit like cows or deer um, or camels maybe. Today we wonder why people painted these animals. Maybe the paintings are records of animals that they hunted. Maybe the paintings are ways of showing respect for the animals and they painted them because they liked them. These, uh, these animals existed in the places where these paintings were made. Uh, so maybe the humans used their imagination and creativity to make beautiful paintings of the world around them. So simply, maybe people painted animals because we're human and we make art. Since then, animals have appeared over and over and over again in art all around the world. These animals are of all shapes and sizes. They may be real animals that are alive today. Uh, they may be animals that existed a few hundred years ago but, and aren't alive anymore, so maybe they're extinct. Um, or they may be imaginary animals that they made up. Let's have a look at some of the animals in the Hunt collection. People of different religions around the world throughout history used their imagination to create an image um, of what their god might have looked like. In places like ancient Egypt, these gods were often um, inspired by animals. Sometimes they were even shown as half animal and half human. Now Horus, this is Horus, and he was the Egyptian god of the sky, war, hunting and kingship. Horus is often shown as half falcon, half human, and the falcon is a symbol of power in Egypt. Maybe they made a sculpture like this to help them to worship Horus. Another time that people may have created animals to, is to help them to tell stories such as myths. Myths helped people to make sense of the things in the world that they didn't understand. So, you know, maybe a few thousand years ago, they didn't understand something like the weather. So they came up with a story to help them understand it. Some popular mythological animals, so that means animals from myths, um, were unicorns and dragons. Now these aren't real animals, so they don't actually exist, but we've all heard of them, right? People in the past 
uh, believed that these creatures to be uh, maybe to give them luck or power um, or maybe they believe them to be dangerous as well. So this object here is a thing called a sword pommel and a pommel goes on to the end of the handle of a sword, so the bit that you hold, and it just helps you to grip it properly and to make the sword the right weight. Um, you can see kind of here, there's actually an image of a unicorn. So there's its horn at the front of its head uh, and there's its body and there's its legs. So why do you think they might have put a unicorn onto the sword? Maybe they believed that the unicorn would give them some kind of luck or power in battle. This object here is a dragon's head bronze mount. Now a bronze mount was used to decorate furniture. Another reason that people may use animals in works of art uh, is because in their culture, the animal might be a symbol of some kind of meaning. In this photograph here, we can see a leopard mask that we have in our collection. So as you know, a leopard is like a big cat. The mask is from Benin, which is a city in Nigeria. The leopard was believed to be a symbol of power, beauty, speed and deadliness. And people who wore this mask, and they didn't wear it on their face like most masks, they would have worn it tied around their hips. Um, and they wore it around their hips as they went to fight in battle because it gave them the strength and the power to fight. Animals may also be used as symbols in art to help them to tell a story. Let's have a look at this sculpture of Apollo. Apollo is the Greek god of poetry, music, light, healing, prophecy and trades. Can you spot any animals in this sculpture? Here you can see a sheep. In the story of Apollo, the sheep is the symbol for Apollo's love, so the woman in the story. The raven is a symbol of Apollo's anger. And you may see a snake here as well, just on his hand. As Apollo is the god of healing, the snake actually represents healing. Other animal-inspired objects had a function. For example, this is an aquamaniel, and it's shaped like a horse. It's from medieval times, when horses uh, were ridden by knights into battle. Now, an aquamaniel is just like a tap. So you can see the spout here, and it was used for washing your hands in medieval times. Often, they were made of metal just like this one. Sometimes, they were shaped like horses or lions, um, but also of more imaginative creatures like dragons. Can you think of why they made a tap shaped like an animal? Animal shapes were often used as decoration, so maybe this decorative aquamaniel was used and owned by someone who was really wealthy and wanted their house to look beautiful. Animal shapes and patterns have always been a very popular decoration. Have you ever seen an animal statue in your house or someone else's? Have you ever worn clothing with animals printed onto them? These are all examples of decorative animals. People put statues like that into their house to make the space look nicer. People wear colourful, patterned clothing to make them look more interesting. In our collection, we have some nice examples of decorative animals. These pugs were made in China. They're made of a very special type of clay called porcelain. And they were, they were very popular decorations in both Europe and China at the time. Now they were made by pressing the wet clay into a mold, which is like the shape of the pug. They pressed the clay into the mold and they left it to dry. Did you know that pug dogs originally came from China? Now this is a ceramic zebra plate. As you can see, uh, the plate is decorated with an animal on the middle. And we all know plates are mostly used for eating, but have you ever seen decorative plates? Like plates that are kind of hung on a wall and have a pattern or an image in the middle? This plate was made for Irish people. And we can tell that because um, you'll, if you look closely, you can spot some Irish symbol, symbols on the plate. Do you see around the outside? There's shamrocks and harps 
and lots of other symbols from Ireland. But then there's a zebra right in the middle of the plate and the zebra is not from Ireland at all. So why do you think they put a zebra on the middle of an Irish plate? Now it could be because zebras were strange, beautiful, exotic creatures to Irish people in the 1800s. So it was really cool and interesting to have uh, an, an unusual animal like a zebra on the plate. Now this is a tapestry. A tapestry is a piece of art made from fabric that is hung on a wall as a form of decoration. This tapestry is from medieval times. That it is actually only a small section of what is a much larger tapestry. They were extremely expensive items and only rich and powerful people had them in their house. This is because they took a long time to make. Can you spot the different animals? I see a lion here, maybe a stag or a deer here, and I also see some birds in the middle. Now I'm going to show you how to look up objects in our collection. So firstly you have to go to our website which is huntmuseum.com Then you search that and it'll bring you to our website homepage. Now you might notice along the top here there's a section that says the collection. So click on that and it'll bring you to our a collection search bar. So there's a few different ways you can search the collection. Firstly, if you know the name of the artist, you can click on this section here and scroll down and find the name of the person who made it. But we don't know who made all of the objects in our collection, so this doesn't always work. Another way to search it is to look in all objects. So we've got loads of different object categories here. So loads of different types of objects. So if you know that your object is a costume, you can scroll the whole way down and find costume and search that. I'm going to click on animal equipment because that's what we've been looking at. And then you just press search. And it'll bring you to loads of different objects that we have associated with uh, equipment for animals. So you'll see we have things like a cheek piece for a horse harness, we've got a dog collar, we've got a bell for a bird, and loads of things like that. So then you want to go back, refresh the page. Another way you can search for the object is based on what material it's made of. So if you click on this drop down menu, you'll see a number of different things. It might be made of ceramics or glass or ivory. So that can be really handy. Another way that we search our collection is the object registration number. Basically, every single object in our collection has a registration number. Um, this is our way of categorizing all of the objects. So we've numbered every single one of them and we can find it then by searching really easily. Um, let's take uh, the one for Apollo. HCM013. Press search. Now, there he is. So you can click on him. You'll see there's an image of him here and then you get a whole paragraph of information about him and some extra details at the bottom. If we know the name of the artist it'll be in here but we don't for Apollo. Um, if we know what type of object it is, so this is a sculpture, it's in here and what material it's made of, so we know that it's made of wood. And then down here there's some more information. And the object registration number is really handy if you go to the museum and you see an object that you really like, you can take down a note of the registration number and then look it up online afterwards. Let's go back. So another way you can search the collection is by typing in a keyword. So if I type it in here, let's say I want to look up um, tapestries. I'll type in tapestry and then press search. 
And here we can see all the tapestries in our collection. So this is the one we were looking at earlier. And again, there's some additional information here, an image of it, and some of the finer details, as well as more information at the bottom. So that's how you look up objects in our collection. It's very straightforward. Have a go and um, maybe take one of the objects in this video and you can have a go at looking it up online. So now I'm going to show you how to look up 3D objects in our 3D collection. So if you open the Animal Hunt 3D worksheet, you'll find a link to Sketchfab. So that's sketchfab.com forward slash limerick 3D forward slash models. And you'll find loads of objects from our museum uh, that have been made into 3D. So if you scroll down through them, you might find one that you recognise. Here's the pugs that we were looking at earlier. So if you click on that, it'll bring you to the object. And now you can begin to explore it in 3D. So if you're on a computer, you can left click and drag to rotate. Or if you're on your phone or an iPad, you just use your finger to hold it down and rotate it. You can go up and down as well. Have a look at the underneath. Go the whole way around like that. You can also zoom in, so if you double click on your computer or scroll with the mouse, use the wheel to scroll in and the wheel to scroll out again. Or if you are on your iPad, you can pinch your fingers out to zoom in like that and pinch them in to zoom out again. And this means you can see all the different things in the object that you can see in the photo just like what's on the back of the 3D model. So have a go, go back to the main Sketchfab page and have a look through and see if there's any other objects that you recognise. Here we have the Aquamanil. And it just means you can see it from all different angles, which is really cool. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Animal Hunt video workshop. It's been great speaking with you. Uh, for more activities, you could have a look at the Animal Hunt 3D activity worksheet. Um, so have a go at that and next time you're in the city, make sure to pop into the Hunt Museum. Bye!